WCW or World Championship Wrestling was a prominent wrestling promotion that competed with the WWF, now known as the WWE, throughout the mid-90s and at one point in time was actually beating the WWF throughout the Monday Night Wars. A mainstay of television in, those, in the 1990s, it unfortunately had a lot of backstage destability and a lack of reason within the community and eventually due to its low ratings and poor fan support, it eventually was bought out by the WWF in the early 2000s. Here are its reasons for why it broke up. Number 1. Mismanagement and Executive Interference the company suffered from poor management decisions on many occasions throughout the later half of their tenure with interference from higher up executives who really didn't have a deeper understanding of the wrestling business. Executives often made decisions that negatively impacted the product, leading to creative inconsistencies and confusion among both the audience and the talent alike. Think Bash of the Beach 2000 as a common example of this happening uh, throughout uh, WCW's later half. Yeah, uh, pretty much through their, their bad zone. Bash of the Beach 2000 wasn't exactly uh, their greatest uh, time being a, a wrestling company. Uh, just look at anything online about Bash of the Beach 2000 and you'll, and you'll know exactly what I mean. Uh, from Hollywood Hogan and Vince Russo going at each other to the ridiculous hot potato of the World Heavyweight title as well. It was just an absolute nightmare. It came from a lot of mismanagement and executive interference. Number two, financial missteps. WCW had an over-reliance on spending ridiculous amounts of sums of money on uh, talent and not really ever using them well. And I guess that's sort of something to see when you look at WCW as a whole and the fact that they didn't really make any homegrown stars of their own. The only one that really comes to mind is probably Goldberg, who actually kept them in business for far longer than they should have been. And also probably Sting as well, who was another WCW not really a homegrown talent, but he was like a WCW loyalist. And probably Ric Flair as well. He did have a tenure in the early 90s with WWF at the time. Uh, but by the time WCW was in trouble, he was well employed with uh, within WCW. And just you know, the whole giving these guys ridiculous sums of money and large contracts is just another reason why they went out of business. They didn't know how to you know manage their money properly. And look at the end result. They went out of business because of it. And a lot of their superstars were left out of jobs as a result. But three, creative issues. The creative direction of WCW was very inconsistent with constant changes in storylines and lack of long-term planning. This led to confusing and sometimes really nonsensical programming. There were instances of pushing older talent at the expense of building new stars, see my previous point, which hindered the promotion's ability to create fresh and compelling content. This is another reason why they couldn't keep up with WWF. Initially, when WCW had Eric Bischoff in charge of their creative and running the, the show, to, so to speak, they actually did really well. They beat WWF's flagship show Monday Night Raw for 84 consecutive weeks. That's pretty much almost a year and a half worth of television ratings. It wasn't until that point in time when the WWF started creating more better stars, more compelling content. They went more to a sort of edgier style content and what we now know is the Attitude Era, and it was really profitable for WWF. But WCW, by comparison, didn't really adapt with the changing times and their constant over-reliance on this notion eventually led to their collapse and demise. And that's you know, another reason why they failed. To further conclude this point, WCW had appointed Vince Russo uh, to replace uh, Eric Bischoff um, as sort of their next main guy to steer creative once Eric Bischoff was, you know, was losing the battle uh, against Monday Night Raw in the ratings. And while Vince Russo had success at WWF as a writer, he was always under the watchful gaze of Vince McMahon. And I think this guidance from Vince McMahon really made Russo a success uh, in WWF but when he was left to be on his own in WCW he really didn't know sort of how to steer the ship away from sinking he's best uh, really at his best Vince Russo was best at probably being a stopgap and that's all he could really do with the content create enough to keep the viewer engaged but not really enough to keep the long-term viewer engaged and that you know is another reason why they eventually failed 
Number 4. An over-reliance on WWF talent For WCW to exist in a competitive marketplace against the WWF, they had to sign some existing people or existing names that fans would relate to and get along with. And so in signing Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, the first two to jump ship from WWF, it was seen as a major coup by Ted Turner and you know his TBS network, I believe it was. And you know this, these signings sort of helped push WCW into the spotlight, into the mainstream spotlight a bit more. And then through over the you know the coming months, they kept signing more and more talent, the likes of Gene Oakland, Hulk Hogan, to name a few. Randy Savage even came across uh, as well. And you sort of got the impression that WCW was sort of doing something to sort of you know bridge the gap between them and and WWF. And then it all sort of came to a halt at Bash of the Beach in 1996, where. Paul and Nash then, then billed as the Outsiders were taking on Randy Savage, Sting and Lex Luger in a six-man tag team match. Now, the match started and, you know, Nash and Hall did their best to sort of hold off the likes of Savage, Sting and Lex Luger. And then out came Hulk Hogan in his yellow attire and he came down to the ring and he was like, motioning with Scott Hall and Kevin Nash to stop attacking these guys when he turned on him and then joined both Nash and Hall. And effectively, this was the, the start of what was now known as the New World Order, which would then go on to dominate Monday Night Raw for the next 84 weeks, as I mentioned earlier. And really, there really wasn't any stopping them, just their own accord, really. Within that microcosm of an event, it sort of gives you the understanding that WCW not relying on anything they'd done homegrown but more on who had made a name elsewhere i mean hulk hogan was already a made star in wwf by the time he'd even come to wcw in 1994 the likes of nash and and hall had also been ready-made stars in wwf as well and so without recreating new superstars and being able to do so on a regular basis this over-reliance on wwf superstars became so much that they were signing people for fun by the end of it and you know it's just another reason why wcw went out of business is because they didn't really know how to create those new stars to get that fan engagement and get people really going for their product number five internal politics and locker room issues internal conflicts and politics within wcw arose pretty much when things started going bad there was a lot of power struggles most notably between hollywood hulk hogan and vince russo and a lot of personal animosities as well there's stories on record of kevin nash not really particularly liking anyone having control over his story direction and these really negatively affected the working environment and the overall product this constant infighting and the fact that a lot of wcw superstars were close friends with a lot of their WWF counterparts and the fact that WWF was doing so well at the height of the Attitude Era just really showed how far WCW had fallen and that meant a lot of people wanted to start jumping ship and going the other way so from WCW over to WWF and while this made Vince McMahon very happy it also gave him the unwanted problem I guess of having too much of a bloated roster at that point in time and you know wcw's failings are a lot of the time self-inflicted but the fact that they were outplayed and completely dominated in the ratings by wwf also shows how adaptive to the times wwf were and i guess how much of a good leader vince mcmahon was to get them through that time but also the huge trust he placed in a lot of those wwf superstars the likes of the undertaker stone cold steve austin the rock some of the really big names mick foley as well triple h chris jericho kurt angle they all really played their bit in keeping wwf on top and unfortunately for wcw because of this internal politicking and backstage issues they really didn't stand much of a chance once wwf had gotten the lead and kept that lead uh throughout the rest of the monday night wars and unfortunately for wcw it's, a, it's another reason why they failed in the end to summarize once wcw had gone behind in the ratings against wwf it was really difficult for them to ever keep up bridge the gap in terms of both competitiveness within the marketplace and as a result, this eventually did lead to WCW's demise and their last show was in 2001, at which point a lot of their select assets were purchased by Vince McMahon and WWF. So in other words, Vince McMahon was effectively saying screw you to, to WCW and buying his competition effectively is the way to put it. The major problem of WCW's was the fact that a lot of their main top stars had what was known as guaranteed contracts, so they were guaranteed an amount of money for a specific amount of time. And when WWF had bought 
you know these assets from WCW they could have actually bought out the contracts of a lot of the top stars the likes of Nash, Hall, Goldberg, Sting, Flair but only not only did Vince McMahon not do this he only bought a select few you know the likes of Flair being one of the more notable in inclusions in WWF in the early 2000s and because these guys were getting guaranteed money on the line Vince McMahon wasn't going to go around throwing ridiculous amounts of money just to you know buy these guys out of a contract and even though they brought in the invasion angle of both WCW and ECW invading WWF it really wasn't the same and they had to play with the story to get you know some interest within this invasion storyline I reckon it would have been better had Vince waited a bit longer before pulling the trigger on an invasion storyline and having the proper guys in place the likes of Goldberg, Sting, Nash, Hogan, Hall would have been amazing to see on a WCW inv you know, led team going into WWF against the likes of Undertaker, Austin, Rock, Angle, Jericho, Triple H, Shawn Michaels. That would have been something to behold. Unfortunately, that didn't happen as as much as we wanted it to. It just shows you how far WCW had, fall, had, had fallen and had failed, really. And their demise as a result of all these issues is a reason why they're no longer a company within the marketplace anymore. And at the same time, their failure has also given WWE pretty much a stranglehold in terms of being the number one player in the professional wrestling industry. I mean, AEW can say all they want about having some foothold in that market, but when you're going up against WWE, there's only going to be one option really at the end of the day. And you know, as much as it pains me to say it would have been nice to see WCW go on for a little bit longer, unfortunately, they failed. And that is you know how it is and that's how history has played out but that has been the end of this video guys i hope you have enjoyed please do like actually let me know what you think of the reasons why wcw failed and let me know if you had any more you'd like me or you'd like to discuss in the comments section below i guess is the right thing to say but if you have enjoyed please do like share and subscribe so you never miss another upload and i'll see you with another video very soon have a good one guys and i'll catch you later